Hey you guys, it's Britt. Tonight I'm here to talk to you about family vloggers and money as far as the kids gaining access to the money that they are helping to earn. I had some thoughts, so if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so I know in some recent videos I have sort of dropped this whole idea of intellect and having conversations about family vloggers with intellectual people and i figure you know the other half of that is also providing some insight some elaborated opinions on these certain topics when it comes to family vlogging as a whole and then you have all these different subcategories the one category that i discussed the other day was consent versus informed consent because that is sort of in my opinion, one of the top three issues when it comes to putting your kids onto the internet. In fact, I would say that it's number one, um, you know, because when you're talking about consent versus informed consent, then you can also talk about, um, you know, privacy and things like that. So either way, one of the other big things is money. You know, a lot of these family vloggers are making millions of dollars a year off the backs of their children and that's always been one of the main issues that I've had with family vloggers. So I do always try to consider the few outsiders who might look at this and automatically say their finances are none of your business. Not going to work on my channel that is going to fall flat on its face and the reason is is because when you are monetizing your life and you are putting your children out onto YouTube the public and the internet is how you're getting paid. So the public and the internet has every right to their opinion. And with some of these family vloggers flexing on their fucking subscribers the way that they do, I'm going to throw my opinion out there. If you like it, cool. If you don't, that's fine too. First, let's talk about the two main ways that family vloggers make their income. One is YouTube. But number two, and I would say even more importantly, is through brand deals, sponsored videos, sponsored content for TikTok, Instagram, so on and so forth. And the sponsors are huge because some of these sponsored videos can pay the creator $50,000. If you look at someone like the Ace family, it's even more than that. And that's massive money. Now, when it comes to advertisers, I also understand the whole game of hey, if you put your cute little kids in our clothes or have your cute little kids holding our product in your sponsor photo or sponsor video, they know that people like kids. These companies are not stupid. They know how online marketing and social media works. And they also know that anything with a cute baby or a cute child is going to generate more clicks and views Therefore, the impressions and the reach are going to be massive. I'm also not saying that all companies do that, but when you think of a company that is not worried about the privacy of the child, why would they want to protect the child? They want their product out there. And if suggesting, hey, why don't we get your kids involved in this? Because they know that it will generate more impressions and a larger reach the company is not going to have any shame in making that suggestion. When it comes to the sponsor content too, what I've seen a lot of times is companies will specifically send the influencer a product that a child is meant to use. So let's just take for an example, Target, okay? Target sells everything under the sun. They have lawn and garden stuff, they have electronics, they have women's clothing, they have household goods, home decor, and they also have kids, toys, clothing, everything, you know, for marketed and made for children. So if Target is going to look at all the products that they can send to this influencer, why would they not send this toy if they have a specific influencer in mind for a sponsored deal and they haven't picked the product that they're going to send the influencer, why don't we send them something that kids are intended to use because then they'll have to get their kids involved 
Therefore, the impressions and the reach will be larger. Companies are dumb. When it comes to contacting companies that sponsor influencers, there has been a lot of debate about should people be contacting companies, telling them about problematic influencers that they are supporting? And while I think that it's a really touchy subject, because here's the thing. I do believe that some people step out of line and will make something out of nothing. And if you have every little thing that an influencer has done that is not good and perfect being brought to a company's attention, you're going to lose the company's trust because you're telling them about a tweet that the influencer sent when they were 15. The influencer has already apologized for it and they haven't done anything else that's been problematic. I do think that when it comes to someone like Shannon Rose, my God, I've mentioned her in the last couple of videos, but she is a great example of what problematic, toxic, and just cruel is. If people are going to contact companies that are supporting her, it is what it is. They're contacting them because of a specific type of content that she used to make that is hateful, vile, and disgusting. So I support it, but I also realize how it could get out of hand because you could also just have someone who has a grudge against this influencer and hates them for no apparent reason, and they're flooding the company's inbox with, you know, eight paragraphs long of why this influencer is bad, but is the influencer really bad? So I'm kind of 50-50 on that. I do believe in it, but I think that there's a time and a place in a certain situation where it can make sense to contact sponsors. One more example before I close out my thoughts on sponsorships and income in that category. Let's talk about someone like Micah Stoffer, who has disappeared from the internet for a while. I do believe that she'll be coming back. I just don't know when. Someone like her, who showed that she was a terrible human being, people are going to continue. If companies decide to contact her, let's just say next year she comes back to YouTube, she starts making normal content, so on and so forth, and she pops up on her channel with a sponsored video from Mrs. Myers. Don't think that people are not going to be blowing up Mrs. Myers because that is a good that's a good example of someone who there there is no expiration on what Micah did in my opinion. So that will continue to follow her. So, you know, companies need to really be aware of who they are sponsoring with. Do I think that everyone should just be written off forever? No, absolutely not. But if you are a uh, company that cares about who you align yourself with, I would encourage them to hire someone. It can be a specific role of someone who looks at influencers or celebs or whoever before the company sends them an offer to do sponsor content with said person. Secondly, let's talk about YouTube income, Google, AdSense. This is, I would say, it depends on the channel. I always say sponsorships generate a lot more revenue than AdSense does for most of these really big family vloggers. When it comes to AdSense, I, I always say, um, if the family's focus is their children, all of that AdSense money, Google should be putting into a trust fund for those children until they reach the age of 18, 21, 25. You could set it up however, you know, there's a million ways that you can set up trust funds, but in my opinion, if there is a video with a child and that child is the focus of that video, the AdSense from that video should be going into a trust fund. Now, hold on. I'm not saying that all of the AdSense should go to the trust fund, but it should be a large percentage, at least 30 to 40 percent, even 50 should go into that trust fund so that when these kids get of age 
and family vlogging is ancient and no one's family vlogging anymore. All that these kids went through, at least they can have some kind of financial security when they turn 18 or 21 or whatever it would be. There has to be some kind of change when it comes to the income that's being generated off of these kids. There has to be something that changes. I don't like that the kids are even on videos. However, if they're not going to, you know, put laws in place right now, Google could make a somewhat quick decision. Quick to them would probably be a year from now. They could build out a plan for family vlogging channels that says, this is what's gonna go on. If you still wanna vlog your kids, A, we're gonna change our terms of service because I don't believe the kids should be shown um, you know, in, in compromising situations. It's just never gonna be okay. If your child is gonna be in your video, then this percentage is gonna go into a trust fund and it is what it is. If you don't like it, then get your kids off your channel. And I realize that there have been some family vloggers come forward and say, oh, well, you know, little Timmy and Susie have accounts of their own and we're putting away money. BS, I call BS on that and of course, I have no evidence, but they're also not showing evidence that these kids have accounts of their own that are holding money from YouTube and sponsor content. So it's sort of a wash. I don't have the evidence, but they're not showing receipts. So I'm gonna go off my assumptions. And my assumptions say that money is not being put away from for these kids. I think that the money that's being made is floating an extravagant lifestyle. The, you know, image of perfection that so many of these vloggers put forward. Expensive houses, 500 trips to Disney, all the home decor and all the junk that all of these vloggers buy seasonally for their homes. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong to buy nice things for your home, if that's what you like to do, but it's always in excess. And the excess and the frivolous spending constantly is what makes me think that the money is not being put away for the kids and that is something that is being fed out to their audience so that they can save face and look like they're actually doing something to help their children in the future. I really do hope that there are some changes made from YouTube and Google for the future of kids being put out onto YouTube. You know, I realize that a lot of these kids are living lifestyles of the rich and famous and they have all the, you know, Dolce Gabbana shirts and Gucci backpacks and all that kind of stuff, but none of that sh matters. None of that materialistic nonsense matters. You're upgrading your eight-year-old's iPad, you know, every six months and little, little Tommy has Gucci sneakers when he's two years old. None of that matters. Financial security 15 years from now is what's really going to matter for these kids. Their parents not having their heads buried in their phone all day is what's going to matter for these kids. For the kids to be able to look back and say, my parents protected my privacy and they did not exploit my childhood for clicks and views is what's really going to matter. So either way, I hope that you guys will tell me what you think about this. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, what, what do you think about the future of family vlogging? I think we're going to see a lot of lawsuits from these kids that have grown up on YouTube. And I think a lot of them are going to be looking at their parents 15 or 20 years from now and saying, where's all my money? Family vlogging is dead and gone. Where is my money? But time will tell. So for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.